Good afternoon, all. Uh, let me start with a quick statement. Uh, the president called Ugandan President Museveni this morning and expressed his, his sincere condolences for the loss of life and offered to provide any support or assistance that the Ugandan government requests. The leaders reaffirmed their shared commitment to working together to combat terrorist organizations that threaten innocent civilians around the world. Mr. Feller. Uh, thanks. A few topics today, Robert. Just to follow on that point, is there any specific assistance that the U.S. is providing at this uh, point? The, the, uh, I'm told that the uh, FBI will assist in uh, the investigation uh, of, of the bombings uh, yesterday. On the, um, on the oil spill, uh, obviously BP is working on this new cap <laughs> today. What's the view from the White House? How, how confident are you all that this is going to work? Well, let's take this in a couple of different stages because the, the containment capacity prior to, uh, uh, let's go through Friday, right, which included the um, uh, top hat uh, going to the Discover Enterprise and the Q4000, which was connected to the choke line, represented about 25,000 barrels of containment capacity uh, on any given day. Sometimes it fluctuates to a little bit more, a little bit less. The containment capacity in the new structure, uh, the ceiling cap will, will draw to two different boats uh, and increase the containment capacity um, from roughly 15,000 to between 20 and 30,000. The helix producer, which was is not related to the ceiling cap, was coming online um, uh, separately. We made the ceiling cap and the helix producer movements uh, happen together uh, rather than separately as was originally called for but changed because of weather. The helix producer was installed over the weekend and began um, containment around noon today. Uh, initially, we expect to get maybe 8,000 barrels of oil a day as the producer ramps up, pressurizes to a containment capability of 20 to 25,000 barrels a day. And because of the increased containment capacity out of the ceiling cap, uh, the choke line, which was feeding to the Q4000 at about 10,000 barrels a day, will have its containment capability increased to 20 to 25,000 barrels a day. So in short, as we replace the ceiling cap and as we add the helix producer, we'll go from a containment capacity of around 25,000 barrels of oil a day to a containment capacity of 60 to 80,000 uh, barrels of oil a day. In addition, the ceiling cap uh, will assist in the eventual killing of the well. Uh, you could either do it separately uh, if uh, the integrity of the well bore has been maintained through the explosion. Uh, and if not, it helps when the relief well intersects uh, to the well uh, in having a separate point of pressurization for mud and cement. Um, so that is the process that is ongoing. The progress report that we have all gotten here uh, is, uh, as I mentioned, the helix producer is now online. Uh, and uh, they are making progress with the new cap, uh, and we're certainly hopeful uh, that over the course of the next several days, uh, they'll get that on, they'll get that tightened appropriately, uh, and the containment capacity that I just described will increase uh, in a way like we haven't seen thus far. You said several times in breaking that down, the idea that these things will happen, that capacity will increase. So is this a point at which the White House can, can say to the American people this is a turning point? Well, I think obviously a turning point in the sense that uh, our containment capacity is likely to be equal to what is coming out of the, the damaged blowout preventer. Uh, obviously, I think, uh, well, twofold. There's, there's obviously we still uh, at some point believe the permanent solution to that well is to cap it. Uh, and obviously that's going to, uh, I wouldn't change the original time frame uh, of intersecting the well and capping it by mid-August. And then obviously you've got, you've still got uh, hundreds of thousands of gallons 
uh, hundreds of thousands of barrels of oil in, um, in the water. Uh, and we will continue to deal with, uh, with, with that oil as it makes its way around the Gulf, uh, as it hits landfall in uh, several of the Gulf states. Over the weekend, obviously, there was an increase in skimming and in situ burns that uh, uh, in order to try to gather the increased capacity that was coming in taking the top hat off, which did increase the flow uh, by uh, about 15,000 barrels of oil a day. I wanted to switch topics to one other point, uh, a couple leftovers on the Russian spying incident. I've heard you say a couple of times that this whole incident will not affect the improving relations with Russia, but I'm still unclear as to why it won't. I mean, the, these folks were caught in the United States, spying on the United States. Why wouldn't that affect or, if not erode, the relationship? Yeah, well, look, uh, I, I, that, not to say that, uh, uh, certainly not to give you the impression or anybody the impression that we don't take that seriously and that we don't, we didn't handle that in a serious way. We certainly did. I, I think the president strongly would commend the law enforcement community for, uh, for their activities. Obviously, uh, we have a, uh, we have an important relationship uh, that uh, we have worked hard to improve uh, and need to maintain, and the president will continue to focus his energies on that uh, uh, based on uh, the reasoning that it's, uh, that's good for the American people. Is there any update on where the folks who have come back to the U.S. are resettling? Was there any debriefing of them? Uh, I, I, none that I have heard. Robert, with Congress back in session, can you talk about what the president's preferred timetable for extending the middle class tax cuts is? Does he think that Congress should try to do it in the next few weeks, or does he think it would be better done in the context of the Deficit Commission's recommendations in December? Look, I, I, uh, I think that if you look at the schedule that is likely to take place over the course of the next several weeks, uh, I don't know whether I'd push it that far or not. I would just say that if you look at what needs to get done in the short term, meaning the next uh, three to five weeks, depending on the House is here for three, the Senate for five. Uh, obviously, we would like to see uh, Wall Street reform finished, and I think obviously we're making good progress on that. Senator Brown uh, from Massachusetts uh, came out, as you know, this morning in support of uh, uh, financial reform. Uh, there will be uh, another attempt to uh, extend unemployment insurance to the long-term unemployed. Uh, we'd like to see the small business lending uh, package approved uh, by Congress. Um, there will be an energy debate, obviously, at some point. Uh, I know I'm forgetting something besides, uh, obviously, Kagan, uh, there was, uh, I can see the list I have on my desk, and I know there's one that I'm, uh, that I'm forgetting, but, uh, 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 no, no, it wasn't that the one I was forgetting. Was, I, I've, uh, uh, there's one in addition to that. Obviously, the president would like to see progress uh, on getting the START Treaty through the Senate as well, uh, something that uh, is a big priority of his. Uh, my sense is that uh, uh, debate on the tax cuts is likely to, uh, to happen later in the year. Um, also, I've got a question about... I, I will say this. I, I, I mentioned this uh, uh, to several people uh, you know, I did think it was an interesting, um, an interesting thing to see over the weekend that Senator Kyle, uh, who has insisted on extending unemployment insurance, that that be paid for, uh, did not believe that extending the Bush tax cuts for the wealthy, and when I mean that, I mean the Bush tax cuts for those making above $250,000 a year, that extending that permanently did not need to be paid for. Uh, I think that is a, an interesting um, uh, prioritization uh, of uh, uh, your economic values. Is the president open to any kind of deal with the Republicans on the tax cuts for the wealthy in exchange for other things that the Deficit Commission might suggest? Well, I, I think it's premature to get, uh, to get too far into that. I, again, I think uh, uh, the tax cuts will likely happen sometime, that discussion will likely happen sometime in the fall, and then the I think the Deficit Commission sometime in December. Okay, and just uh, one more question about 
President Medvedev's comments about Iran, he said that they're gaining the ability to build a nuclear weapon, and I'm just wondering what your reaction to that is. Well, first and foremost, I believe that uh, his comments demonstrate um, the international consensus and uh, a unity of purpose in the international community in addressing uh, Iran and its illicit nuclear weapons program. Uh, with the help of uh, with the help of Russia and China, we have instituted the strongest sanctions uh, ever placed uh, on Iran, uh, sanctions that will have bite uh, and that will uh, greatly complicate their ability to do business around the world um, and uh, have a real impact on Iran's ability to pursue this type of capability. Uh, so, uh, again, I think it demonstrates the progress that we've made uh, internationally in bringing along uh, a community of nations as well as uh, taking concrete steps to make it more difficult. Yes, ma'am. On the six month anniversary of Haiti, mm -hmm. um, all our reports say that the money is still being so slow getting it into the country. $700 million of U.S. donations still haven't been put into the country. What's well, there, look, there, there, obviously there are some, some money is, is tied up in, uh, in the legislative battle around, the suppl uh, around supplemental appropriations that uh, I, that was the one I forgot that uh, uh, in the next three to five weeks that uh, is on, uh, on tap, obviously the, the supplemental bill. Um, look, I, I think the six-month mark uh, reminds us of several things. First and foremost, this was a tragedy of unspeakable proportion. Uh, uh, several hundred thousand people killed. Um, several hundred thousand people are killed in what, before the earthquake, before that earthquake struck, was the poorest nation in the Western Hemisphere. Uh, it reminds us all that we have work to do uh, in responding not simply to the humanitarian crisis that we see continuing today, but the long-term efforts to rebuild Haiti uh, and make it uh, a stronger nation. Uh, again, we are uh, working with uh, Capitol Hill to try to get that supplemental bill through, and hopefully that will uh, uh, make some progress, certainly on that score. Has the president expressed any frustration over the, the pace of how things are going in the region? Well, and again, look, I, I think that, um, again, it reminds us that we have a lot of work to do. Uh, you know, it reminds us that uh, uh, the situation that we found in Haiti long before uh, that earthquake struck uh, called for uh, the type of action that uh, President Obama and, and several of his predecessors, President Bush and President Clinton, uh, have been attuned to. Well, he has been so, asked to visit the region anytime uh, soon. Not that. Robert, uh, what, uh, uh, what, What's different about the offshore drilling moratorium being Well, here, let, let me, I think April's got a, hate, you have a Haiti question? Yeah. Uh, there are reports that uh, former President Bill Clinton is very disappointed with the progress. Does it take President Obama to come down to Haiti, to go to Haiti, to make things move faster? And why hasn't he uh, gone to Haiti as of yet, six mm -hmm. months in? Well, again, uh, whenever, whenever a president goes into a place like that, uh, you create, uh, we have, we have not, wanted to go in and create a, uh, uh, the movement of resources that it takes to support uh, a trip like that. The First Lady is gone, uh, former President Clinton, uh, uh, former President Bush, uh, working in conjunction, um, ha have been. And uh, again, I, I think the anniversary reminds us that we still have work to do and we'll continue to do that work about that work, what are you getting? Are you still getting daily updates and what, is, what are the, the assessments? The President does get regular updates, uh, as, do, uh, as do many in the National Security Council, and this is above and beyond what, uh, what the State Department gets. I know that later, uh, well, they probably are in the middle of doing this briefing. Uh, our USAID administrator is, is doing a briefing on uh, our efforts thus far uh, in Haiti over at the State Department today. So do more to New here. Uh, offshore drilling moratorium coming out <laughs> later today in Interior. What is different about this yeah. that allows you to believe that you can escape another, you know, court well, turnover? Well, I would say this, and uh, I don't want to get ahead of their announcement uh, later this afternoon, but I will say two things. First and foremost, the President 
uh, has and continues to believe uh, that we have to be careful with what we're doing given the uncertainty around what happened 84 days ago. Uh, we know that uh, we know that that is not without uh, some economic consequences to the region, but it's imperative that uh, we have a sense of what happened before we continue to do this uh, again. Uh, and, and secondly, uh, again, not to get ahead of what the Department of Interior will say, but obviously they will take into account um, uh, what uh, what the judge laid out uh, in his initial ruling uh, at the district court level. So you really think you can craft it so that it is substantially <coughs> different and will stand up in court? Yes, we do. We do. I would say just one second. You know, it, it, one thing. I, I do think there. You know, it, it, I think there was some misreporting off of the appeals court case from the end of last week. The, the, the judge did not rule against our ability to prevent. The judge simply ruled that with no company seeking currently to actively drill in deep water, that basically there was. You know, without uh, we did not, in a sense, we lacked standing uh, for a ruling because uh, the type of activity that we were looking to ban was not uh, was not happening. Uh, so, but again, I, I think that the new moratorium that's issued by DOI will take into account the original suits uh, comments. But there's still a wide perception down there that you're choking off economic activity and jobs for people who won't even be drilling in deep water, but just in shallow water. Well, that's simply a misperception as to what we've ruled on, because uh, nobody has suggested that shallow water drilling presents uh, any different challenge than it did 85 days ago. Uh, our moratorium has nothing to do with shallow water. Obviously, if you're drilling in a shallow water, and one of the things that makes our response to the deep water horizon so difficult is, the blowout preventer sits 5,000 feet below the surface of the ocean. In shallow water drilling, the blowout preventer sits on top of the water. So if there's a problem with a blowout preventer, access is unencumbered. 5,000 feet below the surface of the ocean, uh, we are at the mercy of remotely operated vehicles uh, in order to uh, change that situation. So deep water and shallow water uh, are have not been and will not be treated differently. Robert, well, sort of will, will be treated differently, will not be treated the same. I just want to follow up on Hayden. A little off the, when, Go ahead. <laughs> when President Proval was here on March 10th, uh, President Obama said specifically, quote, America will be your partner uh, in the recovery and reconstruction efforts. So when you read these stories saying that only about 28,000 people um, out of the 1.5 million who had their homes destroyed are, are back in, in real homes, doesn't that suggest that this partnership has failed? No, I, again, uh, I think if you look at the response by this government, the response by the brave and courageous response by our military, um, again, there are challenges that are unique to this country based on, uh, as I mentioned earlier, the, uh, the fact that you are dealing with the poorest nation in the Western Hemisphere the moment before the earthquake struck. Again, it reminds us we have work to do. Uh, that work is ongoing. Uh, help is ongoing. Uh, and we will seek to, uh, to continue doing that. I wanted to ask you, there's some comments that the NASA Administrator Charles Bolden made uh, a couple of weeks back that, that drew some interest, uh, specific, specifically from conservatives who are wondering why he said that uh, one of the charges that the President gave him when he got the job was that he had to focus on um, outreach to the Muslim world. Yeah, Why is the NASA I, administrator doing that? Uh, it's an excellent question, and uh, I don't think uh, uh, that that was not his task, and that's not the task of NASA. So did he just misspeak? I think has, so. Has yes. the president spoken to him about that to not clear that. it up? No. Anybody here at the White House? I don't, I'm sure people, people at the White House here talk to NASA all the time. On the drilling moratorium, are you redefining what deep water is? Is it still going to be anything over 500? Again, or? I'm, I'm, DOI is going to have an announcement on this later today, and uh, uh, I will uh, defer to that. Does this mean you're not going to pursue an appeal? Is it still six months starting today now? Well, again, or is it going to be uh, back uh, track? Again, I'm not going to let them let DOI do this. Uh, if you have questions after that, we'll be, be certain. Okay. Yeah, we'll certainly. Uh, 
going back to the rest of your legislative agenda, clearly political rhetoric is heated up on, uh, among all sides. How concerned are you? Political with the rhetoric in Washington? Yeah, I know. Shocking. <laughs> but how concerned are you that, that sort of the fact that campaign <laughs> season is here, for better or for worse, is going to basically slow down or end much of what you can get done? In Congress? Slow down what we can get done. I don't do a, wow, I don't know. You mean somebody might vote what, no? <laughs> Uh, you know, look, I mean, you know, it, it, the election calendar is what the election calendar is. Uh, I, I don't, I don't, uh, it's not any different this year than it is every uh, two years uh, in a national election. I, I will say this, though, Chuck, the, what I just outlined as uh, the business that is, in, that is left in front of this Congress before uh, heading home for the August recess. Is, uh, is substantial, uh, it's meaningful, uh, whether it's extending unemployment insurance to those that have uh, been out of work for uh, longer, than, than it, longer than in any recession uh, since we began keeping statistics on long-term unemployment, making progress on uh, funding for Afghanistan, um, small business lending package. There are a whole host of things that are important and uh, the president uh, believes should be done. First and foremost, um, getting financial reform done uh, and making it the law of the land so that we don't find ourselves celebrating the two-year anniversary of an economic collapse with rules that continue um, the way they did two years ago. Uh, that will be a big push of this president and a big push uh, of this administration to get that done. I want to ask you about a comment that Senator Harry Reid made oh, about two hours after Air Force One took off, apparently from Nevada, where he said <coughs> he was asked about some things that, some ways he, he differs with the president. And he said that the president doesn't like confrontation. He's too much of a peacemaker that he wishes that he would have, he'd be a little more forceful uh, at times with the opposition. Yeah, I, I'm happy what to take you? a look at the context of that. I, I, I doubt that. Uh, uh, I, 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 Doubt what you think they might have meant, uh, or, or what no, they he's mean. Just saying he thinks the president doesn't isn't forceful enough with the opposition. Well, I don't have anything to say. Yep. Investors are very nervous right now. I mean, bearish sentiment is up because you have a lot of uh, economic commentators predicting that we might have a double dip recession or even worse. You know, employment still hasn't picked up. What's the bullish case that the White House is making? I mean, are, are, are you do you still have confidence in the economic? direction you're taking the country and, and, and why? Well, because I, I think if you go back and look at where we are and where we've been, uh, you can no doubt see an improvement in uh, whether you want to use the statistics on uh, economic growth, whether you want to use the statistics on private sector hiring. Uh, I think on each of those cases, uh, there's no doubt whether you look at the last six months of 2009, the last six, the first six months of 2009, the last six months of 2008, you f you find yourself in a markedly different situation, uh, both on economic growth and on private sector hiring. Now, as I said this weekend, we're not unfurling the mission accomplished banner. Uh, seeing an increase and in an improvement in our economy uh, does not mean that the job is done, uh, and I think it's important to understand. I probably have said this more than anything that I've said in this room for the last 18 months. We did not get here overnight. We didn't even get here as a result of what happened in September 2008 just by what happened that month. There were, this was a, this was a long time coming and the hole that it left in our economy, particularly with jobs, uh, was as deep as it has ever been. Uh, that is going to take some time. The president has put us on a course toward an improving economy, uh, we have to remain vigilant. That's why financial reform is important. That's why unemployment insurance is important. That's why small business lending is important. Important task that Congress needs to get done uh, before August. You know, you've had, you've had some days to digest what the business round, round table sent over, you know, things that the administration is doing that is, is uh, an obstacle to growth and hiring. Are you having second thoughts either about the direction, your policies, or even the policy advisors that the president has? No. Uh, I, I, again, I'm happy to compare the environment that business operates in now and the environment that they operated in 
say, the end of 2008. I think corporate profits are a pretty good example of, uh, of, of, of an increased, uh, of increased business activity. And I'm not entirely sure that the business roundtable would look at the list that they sent over and think that was uh, uh, necessarily their best case. Uh, I don't necessarily think putting uh, uh, equal pay for women as a drag on the economy is necessarily a message that they uh, fully want to carry forward. Can I follow up with this? Mark? Sure. The, when you talk about corporate profits <coughs> rebounding, actually analysts would argue that the rebound in corporate profits is, is predicated mostly on, on cost cutting and job cuts rather than top line growth. In other words, the revenue well, that companies are coming in. So well, but no, 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 you can't, you, you, can't, you can't tell me that the consumer demand and economic growth on July 12th, 2010 is as it was October the 12th, 2008. You simply can't sit there and, and make that, uh, you can't make that comparison. You can't look at an, eco an economy that was contracting at more than 6% in a quarter with an economy that's growing at 3% a quarter and say that the, 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 the consumer climate is the same. You can't look at a month in which we were losing almost 800,000 jobs and a month that we were gaining 100,000 jobs and say that the business environment's the same. I don't think anybody with a straight face would make that. Is the consumer robust then? What, how would you characterize it? I would say that, again, the consumer environment is improving. Uh, are we out of the woods? By no means. Uh, do we have to do, uh, do we have to remain vigilant in ensuring the recovery of our economy? Yes. Will it take some time? Yes. Yes, ma'am. Um, to follow up on the corporate um, issue, the, the, the business community is also arguing that if you lower the corporate tax rate, that could possibly encourage hiring. And the president, early on in his administration, said that he might be willing to look at that further down the line. Well, I think the president talked about looking at that in, in conjunction with uh, also with the loopholes that we have in our tax code that allow, um, for instance, uh, companies to drive a tax benefit from moving a job overseas rather than investing here. Look, uh, I, don't, uh, I don't doubt that a, a, a corporate tax structure uh, looking at the loopholes, uh, as the President talked about a long time ago, uh, isn't something that could be valuable. But that's one of the um, ones that Business Roundtable was raising, this whole issue of tax deferrals and how they're saying you have to remain competitive abroad, you know, U.S. competitiveness. And right. that argument that well again you can't close that as a loophole. closing tax free. loopholes and restructuring the tax code uh, I think the president believes uh, uh, can and should be done simultaneously Mark Robert on the bombings in Uganda is the administration accepting the claim of responsibility from uh, the Somali group al Shabaab look obviously the FBI is involved in this investigation all I will say about this group Mark is that uh, Obviously, this is a group that has made threats uh, to the Ugandan people and to the Ugandan government based on uh, its support of African Union peacekeepers in Somalia. Uh, that is uh, not to say that uh, uh, there's been any, there's been a definitive conclusion uh, on who is responsible, but this is certainly a group that has threatened uh, Uganda in the past. And I will say this, I think there is no clearer signal uh, about the hateful motives of terrorists than was sent yesterday. Uh, what they seek to destroy uh, and who they seek to kill, innocent people, just as the continent of Africa, just as the country of South Africa shows the world uh, what it had built, uh, I think speaks volumes to the hateful motives of those uh, that history will judge uh, as looking only to destroy uh, and to kill uh, rather than to build. Uh, Robert, on the uh, moratorium, do you have a time on when that's coming out from Interior? I don't know. My sense is that it'll be sometime uh, later this afternoon, um, uh, probably like 4 o'clock or so. I, I don't know the exact time, I'll be honest and with you. Follow up on the moratorium. Uh, there was a report uh, over the weekend, uh, the 33 or 34 rigs stationed down there, that one of them was pulling up stakes just because of the uncertainty and the legal challenges and a, and a revised moratorium coming out. What, what concern is there at the White House about other rigs possibly doing well, the same? Well, look, I will say, Roger, this was, this came up in our original discussions about the moratorium. We understand that this is not without 
um, th this the economic uh, the economic consequences of this were were talked about. But what was also talked about at the same time was what is our containment capability? What what's a company's containment capability, and what is the government's containment capability in the event that something that uh, something unique, a series of unique circumstances, uh, uh, whether the Deepwater Horizon was something that unique or something that uh, is much larger, uh, relating to blowout preventers, relating to the conditions in deep water drilling, um, that is a chance the president uh, weighed and decided not to take. Uh, again, there are certain risks that are taken when drilling at that depth. Um, the Deepwater Horizon explosion happened um, at a point in which the drilling had r reached the oil reservoir, as, as we now see. Um, there are obviously risks as one gets to that reservoir, but the President believed uh, in weighing all of those circumstances uh, that pausing deep water drilling uh, during an investigation made sense uh, based on uh, many factors, including uh, containment capability. So you're not overly worried about rigs pulling up? Here. Well, I would say that it was a concern, but on the scale of concern, uh, having something like this happen again before we know what happened at the Deepwater Horizon site, the President believed did not make a lot of sense. And one more, if I may, uh, separately. <clears throat> there was a report that uh, Netanyahu uh, says that he sees direct peace talks with Palestinians uh, beginning in early August. Do you have anything on that? Uh, I don't have anything uh, specific on that. Uh, I know obviously the President is hopeful in creating conditions that move us from proximity talks to direct talks and that we, don't, we, we aren't having direct talks simply to have them. We're having them uh, as a means to an end uh, and we're certainly hopeful that uh, we're on that path. Major. Robert, the New York Times reported this morning that uh, Democratic governors privately expressed some anxiety about the lawsuit against the Arizona immigration law in meetings with two senior White House officials. They were anxious about the climate, economically, the issue of immigration, the timing of the lawsuit. Has any of that been conveyed to the senior administration officials here or the president? And what's your re reaction well, to that uh, level of anxiety? J just the, uh, I, I will say that from the reading that I got from the individuals that were at the meeting that this came uh, as a fairly small part at the end of a meeting. Um, look, our reaction is that uh, uh, we understand the frustration of all of those involved, Arizona included, in the government, federal government's inability to comprehensively deal with uh, the problem of immigration. The President believed and the Justice Department believed that um, you could not have 50 states piecing together patchwork immigration laws. Uh, and that's what the suit uh, was filed. That's why the suit was filed. This came up at the tail end of a meeting. You that's, that's my it as incidental to the concerns I would raised. not say that uh, it, it took up even a huge part of, or even a, a big part of the meeting. Are these uh, concerns the administration takes seriously, or do you think they're somewhat an overreaction? At well, this government, at the look, I, I have not spoken individually with governors. Again, uh, um, Everybody in, in a political season and in the calendar has certain equities. Um, Arizona acted, um, again, based, I think, on large parts and frustration in this, uh, in the federal government's inability to deal with this situation. We understand that. But uh, while the timing of these things may be inconvenient, uh, this administration is here to do what it thinks is right, uh, not simply to look at the calendar than to decide what is right. Why, why did the administration ask the Business Roundtable to submit, or did it, in fact, ask the Business Roundtable to submit a list of regulations it would like to have reviewed, and would any of that fall within the issues that are currently pending before Congress? You wouldn't reopen financial regulatory reform, would you, to meet these needs? No. Okay. Uh, what, what other kind and of And I think, things? quite frankly, we've worked with people like the Business Roundtable in implementing the health care law, uh, to such to the point that I think they have... Uh, found uh, our discussions with them uh, and with folks like Nancy Ann to be uh, extremely helpful in understanding uh, how this law is going to be implemented. Look, the, the, during the transition, the, 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 the then uh, soon-to-be administration uh, said that we would look at and evaluate uh, regulations from all perspectives. 
uh, to ensure that um, uh, we had a common sense review. That review uh, continues uh, even now. But I will say, while the president has always said he would look at any list of regulations that people believe to be onerous, obviously we have, uh, we have to ensure uh, the health and safety of this country. Uh, and we will evaluate any regulation based on, uh, on that scale. Just to clarify for me, uh, you're looking at things you proposed that they're concerned <coughs> with, correct? Or this is a regulatory well, I think, uh, uh, conversation about regulations that predate your administration? Well, Are you trying look, to explain again, things I, I that think if proposing? somebody came to this administration to make a case for uh, onerous regulation, we, would, we, we have been and we always will be uh, happy to take a look at that. That's not to say uh, that, uh, that we're going to walk away from our obligations uh, at ensuring the nation's health and safety. Does it concede any point as to whether or not you've been over-regulatory? Uh, I, I, again, I, I think you'd know my position on that. You can go ahead and state it if you want. Hmm? Well, you can go ahead and state it if you want. I, I'll let you. One last question. Make you sure talked about voice. political equities a second ago. Uh, you said yesterday on Meet the Press that enough seats are in play that Republicans could take yeah. control of the House. Some of the people who have equities in that work at the DCCC, and they're not so happy to hear you so declare. Um, do you really believe Republicans are like could take control of it? I think I, I think I, uh, I did what is maybe uncommon in this town, and yesterday I opened my mouth and stated the obvious. Um, I, 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 I do not believe. Uh, I do not believe that. You all are now scurrying around to cover this election markedly different based on uh, my having said that there are a number of seats that are in play. I think, understand this, I think this is going to be an election where, as I said yesterday uh, during my answer, there will be a choice. There is going to be a choice about whether you want an economy that looked like the last six months of 2008 or the last six months of this year. You are going to have a choice between um, uh, the leadership that we have now and the leadership that believes that, uh, that BP should be apologized to first and foremost, uh, and that the type of calamity wrought by the, uh, uh, by the financial meltdown in the end of 2008 is analogous to the size of an ant. Those are choices that the American people are going to get a chance to hear uh, and make in November. Peter. Robert, uh you said earlier, t taking off priorities for uh, yeah. things in Congress you all wanted. You mentioned make progress, President wants to see progress made on the START mm -hmm. Treaty. What is the current thinking about that in terms of timing? Is that something that could happen this summer? Is that something uh, that I think it is our hope that, uh, that we can make progress, uh, meaning getting this to the President's desk uh, this summer. Again, we have what I outlined is a very busy Senate schedule. Uh, made more difficult by the fact that we don't have a full Senate at the moment. Uh, that's going to uh, uh, that may well delay moving forward on uh, on some of these topics. Uh, I, I believe the president still strongly feels that we will get start done uh, this year. Is this something that happen after the election in the lame duck session. Well, I, I, uh, the Senate will be back uh, after the August recess before they go home, and uh, I certainly think there's an opportunity to do it then as well. I ask on the, the, do you think there's any impact, uh, the White House worry about any impact of the spy scandal? Would you, what would we say to critics who say that this whole episode has shown that we can't trust the Russians, so why should we uh, approve a treaty with them that involves to some degree of trust? Well, again, there's, there, to quote Ronald Reagan, there's both trust and there's verify, and there's certainly plenty of protocols within the treaty that allow us uh, a robust verification protocol. Uh, that ensures uh, that uh, each side is living up to uh, the spirit and the letter of the treaty. Pam, you're good. Uh, two quick questions, thanks. One is on immigration. Robert, you think this, uh, whatever is going on in Arizona, is going to affect or is affecting the U.S. relations with other countries or national, uh, international policy? Well, look, uh, obviously, uh, uh, I think the Mexican government has spoken uh, to this, uh, I I'm, you know, would point you toward them for, uh, for their viewpoint on that. As far as small businesses are concerned, they are still blaming uh, banks that they are not still lending them. 
But President Obama had spoken and said and told the banks that uh, small businesses need to be helped. Well, again, one of the things I think the President believes that uh, uh, is on the agenda and should be done before we leave for August is, uh, uh, is an increase in our ability to lend a small business uh, through a small business lending initiative that we think will make progress and uh, feed the job creation businesses, the businesses that are uh, most charged with creating jobs in, uh, in this country. Yes, sir. Thanks, Robert. Um, I have two quick questions. But, uh, first, can I follow from last week? Uh, did you get anything back from the President on the uh, Lend Back rally or the new Black Panther case? Uh, I, have, uh, I have not talked to him about that, no. All right. Um, first question, uh, does the White House or the President have any reaction to uh, this uh, Sarah Palin, Mama Grizzly ad? Uh, President seen it. Not that I'm aware. Any any reaction to the prospect of, of Palin as a opponent in 2012? There's been a lot of talk about that. I, I, I assume 2012 will sort itself out in the years 2011 and 2012. But uh, okay. again, I, I will say this: I think there is, you know, there is a viewpoint uh, that we will have a debate and discussion about in both uh, likely in 2010 and, and probably again in 2012 about. Uh, about the direction that this country is going to go. And uh, I made this point, David Axelrod made this point, where you're going to get, a, get an opportunity to think about whether we're going to go back to what we came from uh, or whether we're going to go forward. And that's a, a debate I think the President uh, and many here are, uh, are anxious to have. Second question was, um, a lot of folks are wondering uh, why nobody from the former MMS or uh, the Interior Department uh, has been held accountable for their part in the, the BP disaster. And I'm wondering, is, well, there, is there anything happening? I, there? I would, I would, I mean, uh, I would say that the both the director of MMS and the director of permits within MMS uh, no longer work for the federal government. The voluntary resignations. Work. I mean, you said, you said they weren't they, related to. They, this they, bill. they don't. They no longer work in the federal government. Yes, sir. Last week you said you would check on why the president. Yeah, they should have it. gotten something back to you on that. If they haven't, I will. Yeah. I will get that. Uh, I will get that done right after this. Yes. Sir. What were you checking on? Uh, <laughs> I was checking on the, the notion of sanctuary cities and the Department of Justice. Yes, sir. Is there a uh, Bible? Don't chat? tell me you didn't. If you didn't have that on your list, Mark, then what the? I'm just saying. I mean, come on. If 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 we can't. Uh, wow. I'm just. Please note that in the transcript. That, uh, I, I, uh, I'm just, uh, I'm just saying that's, uh, it's remarkable. Go ahead, Peter. Is there a path to passage of immigration reform this year? Um, could it happen in a lame duck session? Uh, it, I don't know that the calendar is determinative of this. I think it's the support of, uh, uh, of those in both parties. I think the president feels pretty confident that he can bring uh, most of the people in his party, uh, in the House or the Senate, to. Uh, to the table on this, but again, as we've discussed on many occasions in here, uh, there there are those that have supported comprehensive immigration reform in the past that uh, don't appear to be supporting comprehensive immigration reform now. It's certainly no less of a problem than it was when the Senate tackled this in 2005 and 2006 and 2007. There are 11 senators currently serving in the U.S. Senate that uh, that supported comprehensive immigration reform. So. Uh, there is certainly a path to get this done, uh, but it has to include those that uh, originally thought this was both a priority and, and that spoke out passionately for a solution that was comprehensive in nature. Steve? Um, did the President make any progress on Friday in his call with uh, President Abbas about the idea of moving to direct talks? Because given the statements um, of various Palestinian leaders, it doesn't seem that they're more convinced about moving to direct talks than they were, uh, any more convinced than they were about the talk bef than before the Netanyahu meeting. Right. Well, look, uh, I, I think, again, as I stated earlier, uh, we think we have made uh, progress in proximity talks um, and uh, believe that those conditions will can lead to and should lead to direct talks. So. Uh, I have nothing beyond the readout that uh, that came out on the, the call with uh, with a boss, uh, but believe that we are heading in the right direction to make progress. Robert, hey, two from. questions one, one on health. Haiti. One more in Haiti. Um, <coughs> President Obama's meeting with the Dominican Republic, uh, Republic leader. Um, yeah. Is he going to ask him about taking some of the Haitians from Port-au-Prince and, and, and relocating them there? Well, let me do this, Let me let me. Uh, I'd be happy to take that question after. 
uh, after that meeting rather than uh, uh, I don't want to posit what the president might do or say. Uh, I think that's certainly a part of it. Uh, obviously, there are a host of regional issues that they'll get into. Savannah? Is it uh, the administration's goal or desire that deep water drilling resume after its safety review? Once it's safe, yes. Yes, sir. Uh, Ken, I'll come back to you. Thank you, Robert. You point out frequently the differences between this administration and the previous administration. With the latest recess appointment, the obvious question is, why do you simply not wait for the confirmation process to go through and submit it to a Senate when they schedule a hearing before the appropriate committee and well, make recess th This wasn't a hearing problem, right? This is, we, we don't, we've had plenty of nominees that have had hearings that wait months and months and months and months before the Senate w will be allowed to take it up. And what I mean be allowed to take it up, meaning simply getting unanimous consent to have a debate and a vote. Sometimes after 10 months of waiting, that unanimous is, consent is gotten and the approval of the nominees is unanimous. And then one simply wonders why we've waited 10 months. Uh, the health care law. The Senate was too slow on Berwick, is what it is. I will say that there are those in the Senate that had no intention of dealing with this nomination other than to play the political game. But how do you know? And the, are you that cynical with the process already? You <laughs> didn't want to get the. No, you didn't no, even not, want to see not, it no, play I'm, its I'm, way through. I'm, like I'm not a cynical person. I just have ample evidence. Well, 21 times. 21 times. Let me compare the Bush administration and the previous administration and find a break. On 21 occasions, Unanimous consent was blocked in order to, and cloture had to be invoked to get somebody a vote. 21 occasions. In the first year of the Bush administration, how many times did that happen? How many times did that happen? How many times did that happen? Fred, how many times did that happen? How many? Zero. Zero. Yeah, guess what? Both of you knew the answer to that. Did the chairman ever ask Chairman Baucus for a hearing? Did who? Did the president ever ask Not to my knowledge. Well, yes. On the, uh, Robert, on, on Israel and Iran. Excuse uh, me, Robert, how can you complain then about the process when the president did Because, as I said, th this wasn't a hearing. This wasn't an issue about a hearing. Th this is, this is, this is <laughs> your latest attempt to decide that the process was being upheld because there hadn't been a hearing scheduled. The hearing wasn't a problem, right? There would have been a hearing. He would have gotten out. And guess what? Months and months and months would have passed before anybody would have consented to simply taking up the nomination. Now, we passed a law, Health Care Affordable Care Act, that has to be implemented. There are things that have to be implemented by the first of the year per the law. Uh, we are not going to wait for those in the Senate that want to see this delayed and delayed and delayed before something, let me finish my answer, before this is taken up. Now, I know there's these grand conspiracy theories, right? That Somehow, the American Medical Association, the American Hospital Association, the American Association of Retired Persons, Mark McClellan, and Tom Scully seem clearly not to be complicit in, in supporting somebody amply qualified to run CMS and to implement the law. And that's what the president well, sought to do. have a hearing where all of that can be decided in July and if there's a blockage of a recess because, appointment in August? Because I mean, the, the, we're not the, the going counter to that you just no. described would not be affected by that. He'd still Absolutely. be in place. What's today? July 12th. we got three weeks until August. We're going to implement the law, Major. We're not going to wait around. We had a hearing no, 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 in July no, 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 no. and recess appointment we're in not, August. Why we're not We're not going to wait around for the same old people to stay and play the same old political games time after time after time. We're just not waiting around for that. Sure, yes, sir. Yeah, um, Robert, I hate to get away from the excitement, but uh, on, I know. On, Israel, <laughs> on Israel and Iran, um, given the Netanyahu statements just in the last few days and Medvedev statements, is there a feeling, the President have a feeling that we, the U.S. has bought enough time against a possible Israeli? Well, look, I, I, I'm not going to get into uh, uh, that type of discussion, except to say that I think if you look at the uh, the level of sanctions placed both unilaterally uh, by Congress, unilaterally I mean by the Treasury Department, by Congress and by the United Nations, 
there's no doubt we have made it harder for those uh, for, as I said earlier, for Iran to pursue that capability. We will continue to, uh, to ratchet that up until, uh, uh, until we see the type of progress that we need to. Ken? Our question on health. Oh, Ken had Robert, Robert uh, uh, the administration is about to unveil its uh, HIV and AIDS policy. I was wondering if you could talk a little bit about the scope of exactly what the administration has looked at. Previous administration had a very robust policy. Yeah, again, you expect I, to be at. You know, look, okay, let me. I, I, I'm going to let. Uh, they're going to do a call on this fairly shortly. Uh, they'll have uh, uh, the information that I think you guys are all looking for. Thank you, guys.